Hi, my name is Sean, and on behalf of Thursday Group 3, I will be presenting our signalized intersection analysis and design for Main Street West at Westbourne and Rifle Range Roads. The main reason we chose this intersection is because of its proximity to campus. This intersection is less than a kilometer away and is accessible by several frequent HSR routes which removes a lot of the burden and planning that otherwise would have been necessary for the group field work. It also strikes a good balance between relevance and difficulty, since it is a very important intersection for intercity travel, yet is still manageable for an introductory exercise. Main Street has two lanes each direction, as well as a center permissible left turn lane, and Westbourne is one lane each direction. Rifle Range Road has one wide southbound lane and two northbound lanes at the intersection, one of which is restricted to permissive right turns. The intersection is not on a grade. Crosswalks run across all four corners of the intersection. Due to the unsymmetrical geometry, the sidewalks are not parallel, and thus the crossing of Westbourne has a different length than the crossing of Rifle Range Road. All measurements were taken from Google Maps. Activity surrounding the intersection influences its importance. Residents traveling to and from their homes via Westbourne Road adds use, as does truck and worker traffic to and from the light industry to the southeast of the intersection along Rifle Range Road. The number 1A King and number 10 B Line bus routes stop here on weekdays, while the Dundas bound and returning number 5 Delaware buses provide public transit seven days a week. Is the plaza to the southwest that likely has the largest impact, with the fast food restaurants and especially the supermarket acting as a destination for the entire Westdale and McMaster University communities. This plaza can be accessed off of Rifle Range Road or Main Street West, just to the east of the intersection itself. On a broader scale, Main Street West act, acts as an arterial road is one of the very few connectors of the separated large communities within Hamilton city limits. Our selected intersection takes the full brunt of the westbound traffic heading to Dundas, Flamborough, and Ancaster, as well as the eastbound traffic heading to McMaster University, Westdale, and downtown Hamilton. The intersection follows a two-phase cycle, with going straight through being the only protected action. Other than lane restrictions, no special rules are in place for the permitted turns. Like many signalized intersections in Hamilton, ours is a dynamic intersection. The second phase of the cycle, with Westbourne and Rifle Range Road given the right of way, can only be triggered through outside interference. Either a pedestrian must hit the crossing button, or a vehicle must roll up and be detected by an inductive loop. The graph time distribution assumes that the Main Street West phase is at its minimum possible length. The fieldwork for this project was completed at around 1 p.m. on Thursday, November the 2nd. Weather did not play a factor in our results. The threat of rain was there, but no precipitation occurred during our observed cycles. The traffic level was manageable, not nearly as heavy and difficult to measure as it would have been during the morning or afternoon rush hours. The saturation flows on Main Street West were assigned to groups of two, while all other saturation flows and arrival flows were done individually. Group members assigned to low use flows often recorded the results by hand, while voice recorders were used for Main Street West. All vehicle data was inputted into Microsoft Excel files and converted into passenger car units using the guidelines from the Canadian Capacity Guide. From the Intersection Geometry, Fieldwork, and Canadian Capacity Guide, we calculated the required amber time, intergreen period, and all red time. The pedestrian clearance period and pedestrian minimum cycle length were also tabulated to ensure cycle length compatibility later on. The flow ratio for every direction was calculated, and then critical flows were determined and used to find the minimum and optimum cycle lengths. We decided to stick with the original two-phase cycle since it seemed efficient, with very little congestion seen during our field work. The original timing structure falls between our calculated minimum and optimal cycles. Adopting a similar time distribution to our calculated optimal cycle could produce better results. 
particularly during rush hour in the form of less queuing for the heavily used Main Street West corridor. Removing the dynamic aspect of this intersection and coordinating it with other local intersections would provide even greater congestion reduction results. I hope my explanation was clear and informative. Thank you for watching.